Hey, Shalom. Our praises to Yahweh Bashem. Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakodashay. Much mercy to you, sincere brothers out there, the true house of David. All you brothers that's um that's been redeemed to understand the Lord in these days, to understand his covenant. Um, shalom to you brothers. And um much mercy to all you brothers out there. That's teaching this um, new covenant and sincerity. I wanted to go on something real quick. Uh, when you go into the book of Acts, uh, Paul, he was known as, as a pestilent fellow. And I want to grab that <clears throat> pestilent. Because when you go into that word pestilent, when you go into that, uh, pestilence it's a plague so in the first century this doctrine was a plague unto our people and Paul was a pestilent fellow he was like a plague and that's why those men got put to death in the first century because they was a plague um, unto that, that structure and men that was trying to teach false doctrine in the churches and just like how the Lord was, you could say the Lord was a plague, too, because they hated the Lord. And that's why they killed him. And that's why a lot of men died in the first century. So you got to understand that this is a plague unto unto guys that. That really are against that are really against God. So you got to understand that by them being a plague unto the the uh the churches and the the empires and all in the first century the men of, of God they were teaching a different doctrine which didn't have nothing to do with Moses we got to keep drilling that in because a lot of people are fighting for this world because the powers that be they understand and Satan understand that if you get men to totally believe in the Lord then that's it but if you throw Moses in there, that's that's causing a stumbling block. And I heard one reprobate guy say that um, you want guys to be this and this and wicked without the law. Like you don't need the law to be righteous, man. Uh, Paul, was, all the um, all the men in the first century, all the laws you need are in the new covenant, man. All the laws, all the moral laws. Uh, for you guys saying the guys just be saying shit. You don't need that old law to be righteous. That's why this new covenant is not for average individuals. It's not for average guys. It, it is not for your average guy that's teaching the Bible. This is this is only for the election, the elite, the the best of our people that have spiritual minds. To understand you can't hold two contracts. To understand you can't have two husbands. Spiritually and figuratively speaking. That's what Paul says in Romans 7. That the old law referred to a dead husband. Um, Paul was against all the moral laws from the Old Testament. They're automatically followed. I don't see how guys are. If you're righteous, you do the things that that you're supposed to do anyway. So guys making the claim that you need the old law for men not to be wicked. That's some bullshit because guys are in the flesh. So guys are not in the spirit because the spirit uh, keeps you from the evil. That's what the Lord said. And um, John 17, he says, I pray that I, I don't keep them out of the world, but I pray to keep them from the evil. So the Lord, so the Lord keeps you out of the evil. So if the Lord is not keeping you out of the evil and you're a reprobate in these camps and you're holding the Moses, that means the Lord ain't praying for you because I'm going to say this too. If you, um, are holding, if you, if you say you teach a new covenant, right? And if you really believe, and if you really are of God, he will really make you understand that this is not about Moses. He will show you. That's why the scriptures say no man can teach you. So like if the Lord is not showing you that this has nothing to do with Moses, if he's really not showing you and he's not really opening things up to you, that means the Lord didn't pray for you. You're not the ones the Lord prayed for. 
So guys are having a hard time understanding that the new covenant is superior is because they're of the old. The, the new covenant is three times heavier than the Old Testament. Now everything's in the spirit. So if you're not a part of it, you're going to hold to the flesh. And that's holding to Moses and teaching men the old law, which you don't understand. Your righteous is when Paul said you're righteous without that has manifested without the whole law, without the old law, the righteousness. You are righteous without the old law automatically. So guys trying to say the old law keeps you righteous. Then they don't understand what the Lord came to do. It's like the old law is like high school. And guys are trying to bring you back to that schoolmaster when all that shit you learned in high school, you don't need to learn that over in the new covenant. You know not to be a goddamn homo or you know not to be an adulterer. You understand not to be a fornicator. But guys don't understand that in the spirit, you can't hold two masters. You can't have two husbands. So you can't hold Moses or and the Lord at the same time. You got you either have to hold one or the other. So if you're holding Moses, it's talking about you're in the new covenant, then ultimately you're at the flesh. Then you don't understand what the Lord really came to do. So you don't need that old law to be righteous, man. I heard some reprobate say that you you want our people to be wicked because you're not keeping them with the law. Well, a lot of our people are going to perish. So really, this new covenant is not for the majority of our people. It's not even for the majority of guys teaching it. That's the truth because guys are not of it. They don't understand that the spirit keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you out of harm. It keeps you righteous. So I want to go into the plague. This new covenant is considered a plague in this time, like how Paul was, like how the apostles was, like how the men in the first century, they were a plague because they were doing miracles. They were healing. They were doing things like a lot of people wasn't doing. And so a lot of them, they were calling them sorcerers because they was uh, doing so much uh, miracles. Acts 24. And. Um, five. I'll just go right to this real quick. This is Paul right here. When Paul had to come before. Uh, Felix. Matter of fact, Acts 24 and one. And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descended with the elders with certain order named Tertullus and informed the governor against Paul. And he was called forth to Tertullus and began to accuse him, saying, seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by providence. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix with all thankfulness. Now withstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou would have hear us of the clemency a few, a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, a mover of the sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So Paul was considered a a ringleader. They said, we found this man to be a passing and fellow. So the teaching of the new covenant at that time, it was, it was, a it was, it was a pest. Let's go into this word pest, pestilent. And so just like the Lord, they killed the Lord. So this is all about, um, teaching the new covenant and leaving Moses out of it. Guys that are trying to hold on to this world and they have an agenda. They're trying to hold you to Moses. Because it's very clear to us that you didn't need Moses at all. Everything is in the new covenant. All the moral laws and everything you need to do morally is in the new covenant. Guys are just holding to the flesh because what that does is that keeps this world going. And that keeps men confused. That's what guys are doing. They're bringing uh, confusion. So I want to go into this word pestilent, which is very heavy. I thought it was very heavy. That's why I had to do this real quick. That word pestilent. Strong's G, 3061. Loimas. Loimas. So that word pestilent, it goes into pestilent fellow, pestilence, pest, plague, plague. So they call Paul the plague. This new covenant was a plague in the first century. That's why all those men, the 70, the 12, they all, they died. 
And that's why you got to remember, it ain't like that no more. These guys don't have the power to kill you like they did in the first century. So we do this thing unto the death, but you got to understand, these guys, they don't have that power anymore. They don't have the uh, power to, to, to put you to death in these times. All the powers went to the new covenant in these times. So that's why the Lord said, if you was with me in the first resurrection and the second, um, the second death won't have no power over it. So if the second death had power over you, you're holding to the flesh. Nothing of the flesh is going to get you delivered. So guys that are holding you to the flesh, they're of the flesh. And they're mixing Moses. They're telling you to keep the commandments. And and uh, they're telling you to keep um, the commandments and the new covenant. Which our fathers couldn't keep those uh, old covenant laws. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's some crazy shit. Let's go. Let's let's uh, let's keep going. That word pestilence goes into plague. So they they thought of Paul and them teaching this new covenant in the first century. They was a plague. It was a plague amongst people, man. For real, it was it, it was a, it was a pestilence. This is this is a pestilence unto people. This is a plague. These are the part of the last seven plague. The pestilence. Of teaching the new covenant and when you go into that word uh we're gonna go into this word pestilence real quick they say paul was a pestilent fellow let me read this real quick luke 21 and 11 it says and it shall be luke 21 and 10 and then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and pestilence and fearful sight and great signs shall there be from heaven. So this word pestilent real quick. So they hated the teaching of the new covenant. Pestilence goes into Strong's thing. G 3061. Loimas. Loimas. It goes into a certain a firmity, a plague, literally, figuratively speaking, uh, a disease, pestilence. So the teaching of the new covenant in the first century, it was considered a a plague. So now when you go to Revelations to show you that this new covenant is a plague to a lot of guys, even guys that's teaching, that say they're teaching the new covenant, this, this is a plague unto them because we're teaching men that you don't have to hold most... You don't have to regard Moses in nothing. Everything has went to the order of uh, Melchizedek. It's went to the Lord now. So by you holding men to um, the old law, you're causing a stumbling block. And what you're doing is you're keeping men in the flesh because you think they have to honor Moses. When Moses himself told you to follow the Lord, I'm going to keep... We're going to keep drilling this in because it is actually working. So what's been set up is certain guys to try to keep you to the flesh because this helps men keep this world. It's real heavy what's, what's happening. So that's why guys are against us so much because guys are carnal and said so they're, they're not spiritual. If, they, if guys are spiritual, you'd be like, man, fuck that. old. Oh, you know, we don't have to follow that old law, that law. None of our forefathers was able to follow that law. That's what Galatians meant. Don't let men bring you back into bondage. Bondage of what? The old law. That's why the Lord said to give capity, uh, to give liberty to the to the blind. So we've been liberated from that old covenant. A lot of you guys haven't been liberated. That's why we understand that a lot of you, the Lord did not pray for you. It's all in your doctrine. Because if you understood um, what the Lord came and did and what Moses told you to do, you wouldn't be holding to that old law. So it's an agenda for you guys that's in the flesh. All you guys are of the flesh because you don't believe in the Lord. Revelations 21 and 9, it says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows of the seven last plagues, of the seven last plagues. 
and talk to me and saying, come hither, I'll show you the bride, the bride, the lamb's wife. So part of the last seven plagues is the revealing of the Lord's wife and the teaching of this new doctrine without the order of Levi and Moses. Guys that's holding to Moses, they're not they're not a part of the new covenant. They just crept in unaware that they that they were condemned. Because you hold it to Moses in this in this last day. Uh Moses, the the order of Aaron, that priesthood has been done over with in the first century. And you cannot disannul this covenant. It already was it already was started. So you can't uh disannul. Moses law was put away when the Lord came. He fulfilled what he was here to do. The Lord said, I have glorified thee on the earth. Revelations 21 and 9 again, it says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows of seven of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. So this is a plague unto you if you're holding to Moses or if you're of the world. This new covenant is a plague because it's not a carnal covenant. It is a spiritual covenant, which is based on faith. First of all, judgment, mercy, grace, favor it is based on unseen principles. Whereas you had the old law of Moses, it was based on things you had to see. That's why the Lord said here, rather mercy than sacrifice. That's why this word has been hidden from guys. So that word plague real quick. Paul was a plague in the first century. This, this new covenant was a plague in the first century. That word plague. Strong's G, 4127, plague A. Plague A. Right, it says a blow, a strike, a wound. This is a blow to guys. It says a public cal calamity, heavy affliction. Woo! Plague. It says a stroke, a calamity, a plague. Right. This is a plague on guys. The teaching of this new covenant. It is a plague on guys. So the lamb's wife is being shown. And this is a plague on guys because they don't they're finding out that they really don't have. They really didn't have the truth. They, they, they really what they're teaching is against God. That's what they're figuring out. And a lot of guys already know that. And they're so demonic. They're just going to keep teaching camp doctrine to the Lord. Get rid of their ass. So this is. Part of the last plagues on the earth is for this doctrine to go out like it's going out. And we're in the and we're in those last plagues. We are in those last plagues. Uh, let me uh, grab something else, too, because uh, this gospel has been hid from guys. It's very heavy. So so guys don't have it. Guys don't have that understanding. And guys can't be corrected. Because what the Lord did, he hid this from our people. I think the brother left a scripture right here. Yeah, he did. Matthew. Matthew 11. Real quick. Matthew 11 and 25. Matthew 11 and 25, it says, At that time, Yahweh Shai answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Woo! So this is hidden from guys, from guys that think they're wise, from your smart asses, from all these carnal guys. That's why the kingdom of heaven don't come with observation. The kingdom of heaven is in a few of us that have understanding. You don't have understanding holding to Moses because if you understood, you wouldn't hold to him. You understand that something new has been formed 2,000 years ago, which this world has been fighting to keep you from that. Matthew 11 and 25, and at that time, Yahweh Shai answered and said, thank, I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven. Because thou has hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. That's what the Lord have done. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me, my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. 
neither nor of any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him so the lord is only revealing this to certain people so this goes back to that the lesson i did the other day the resurrection is the resurrection of uh certain ones you see this is what you got to understand it says come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke not moses yoke take my yoke upon you and learn of me and when you go into that word yoke it's a heavy definition it says come come unto me all ye that labor that are heavy laden and i will give thee rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and i am lowly and you shall find rest into your souls now i went into that word yoke uh before and it basically goes into that yoke has to do with uh that old yoke of the old covenant which those pharisees were trying to hold you in that's why this is a plague upon guys because this goes against what's being taught in synagogues and camps and churches and so on and so forth so this is a plague unto guys that are in the flesh you see acts 15 and 10 it says now now therefore why ye tempt god that's what guys are doing when they teaching you to keep um moses Guys are tempting God. That's what they're doing. They are, bro. It says, Now, therefore, why ye tempt God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Right? Guys are trying to push uh, the, the old cardinal commandments, which none of our fathers was able to keep. And reprobates telling you that the old laws is put in you. The new laws have been put in us. The new, the law of faith and understanding. The law of judgment and discernment. So guys don't know what they're talking about. So this is why Paul said, don't let men try to bring you back to the old law because the Lord has redeemed us from the curse of that law. Galatians 5 and 1, it ain't got nothing to do with the, the sin. It's the whole law was imperfect. That's why the Lord said that uh, in... Uh, in Hebrews 7, it says we're the order, we are under the order of Melchizedek. Galatians 5 and 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with the anointed have made us free. So we're free. That's so a lot of you guys haven't been made free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So the Lord made us free. And so we're not tangled, we're not entangled. Um in that old yoke. So the Lord had given us liberty. He has made free what? The captives. And if the Lord didn't make you free, then you're holding to the old law. So that is a witness against you. Yeah, it's heavy, bro. So the manifestation of the sons of power is being manifested and it don't have nothing to do with uh with Moses. Romans 8 and 21, it says, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of power. And I have to come back to this a little bit later, but this this was a plague on guys in the first century. They hated the teaching of the new covenant, just like they hate it now. And only a few of us are really going to understand this. Like if you are of God, you'll understand Moses have nothing to do with this. You'll really understand that. But what we see that a lot, the Lord didn't pray for everybody, man. So it's a beautiful time, man, if you can understand this. So repent to the new covenant and don't let men bring you back to that old law, man, that bondage. We're under new principles. Guys trying to uh, leave you, uh, trying to put the, uh, they're trying to make it seem like you're going to be wicked if you don't have the old law. Actually, it's, it's the opposite. 
There was righteousness without that old law. Hey, with that, hey, Shalom. Thank you.